Welcome, everyone. This is Thursday, July 11, 2013. This is our monthly school committee uh, meeting of the Northampton Public Schools. We have just returned from executive session and we're now back into open session. And we're going to move on to public comment at this time. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to announcements. Any announcements? Okay, so next order of business is to look at the recommended actions. We're looking for a vote by consent agenda, the approval of minutes, budget and property subcommittee meeting, December 20th, 2012. Rules and policy subcommittee meeting, January 14th, 2013. Budget and property subcommittee meeting, January 24, 2013. School Committee and Alt Joint Meeting, February 5th, 2013. Budget and Property Subcommittee Meeting, February 27th. Budget and Property Subcommittee Meeting, March 5th, both in 2013. Rules and Policy Subcommittee Meeting on March 12th, and a Rules and Policy Subcommittee Meeting on March 26, 2013. Under contracts and transfers, we have a few. Uh, Cascade School Supplies, Art and General School Supplies, NTE for in the amount of $20,000. WB Mason, Art and General School Supplies, NTE, $60,000. VINS Annual Financial Support for VINS Coordinator in the amount of $10,692.34. Handwriting Without Tears, Handwriting Instructional Materials, $11,000. And Pearson Math Investigations Instructional Materials in the amount of $32,000. And lastly, under recommended actions under the consent agenda, uh, one field trip request. Northam High School is requesting um, permission for an Italy trip. Uh, it will occur over the April vacation in 2014. And I did miss one thing under contract and transfer approvals. Uh, it's hub technology, technology network and hardware upgrades. And I'm glad that I'm announcing this one. This is at the cost of $115,780.50. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Without who? Brian yes, you can. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Um, I'm sorry, I'd like to separate out the field trip request. Okay, there's been a request made to separate out. Second. The Italy field trip request. So there's been a motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And so we've separated out the field trip request and we're back to the main motion on the acceptance of the consent agenda without the field trip request. All those in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And now back to the field trip request. This is for the Northampton High School uh, field trip to Italy over the April vacation for 2014. Uh, this is a field trip that, this is our second time doing this, our third year in a row of the European trip that Brian Lombardi and the teachers have led over April break. Uh, two years ago, we did this same trip. And last year, we did a trip to um, Spain it began in Madrid, France, and uh, I'm sorry, Madrid, Spain, and then went to France. <laughs> um, and with the same company, Education First Tours. And so uh, what uh, Brian Lombardi was thinking is that they would do these field trips every other year. So they would offer the Italy one, one year, the next year would be the Spain and France trip. So this is coming back to you the second time on this trip but the third year in a row for this type of trip. So the reason I asked to separate it is because I thought this was a um, very minimal amount of information for such a big trip. And 
um, I, I was uncomfortable with it. it. has has no information about about cost. It, I mean, there's just there's no itinerary. There's no. I mean, there's generally when something of this magnitude comes to us, there's a lot more information included. Um, it this um, it doesn't have a date on it. But I assume it's for like spring vacation. The date is on the top. The date of the field trip. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Um, it, it seems to me that there's enough time for them to come back to us with more information. If, it, if other people agree that we need more, maybe because we've done it before, other people don't feel that way. But to me, I, I thought this was a bit scant in terms of giving us information. I think that you're right. In the past, we've seen the field trip with a daily itinerary and a little more information about what the students will be doing and their activities day to day. Um, what I would ask, if you would be so inclined to approve the field trip because they don't want to begin fundraising or recruiting students until you have approval, so that he's trying to do this early enough, and he does have that information from Education First, uh, and I, I'll make sure that we get that to you. However, if you want that information before you approve it, I certainly understand that, and we can postpone it till August. I, I think the one thing that bothers me is that the cost it's, it's not on this one at all. So you say, well, they're going to start fundraising. What? You know, we don't know how much they're fundraising for. So, yeah, that's um, true. So that would, I, I would, I'm agree with Miss Pick that mm -hmm. we should hold off on this one. Mr. Duvall? Well, I agree with Miss Pick that, I, and I also, when I looked at it, wanted to know the amount of money. I also um, agree with Mr. Salzer that this has been an ongoing um, field trip, and we know that it does cost something and it has in the past cost something and I think that if it's going to help the students start to be able to get the finances together quicker I think that we should approve it I'd like to move that we do approve it and that you know we give them a strong reprimand that in the future that we get all of it filled out properly so we don't have to think harder than we wanted to think tonight but I do think that um, we should have faith in it and go ahead and approve it because I, I, I think that the cost will be basically what the cost always is. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm looking for the pleasure of the committee here. I, um, for a second. I made a motion to approve it. So there's been a motion. No. 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 There's been a motion to approve the uh, trip request. With a strong reprimand. As presented. <laughs> and it's a reprimanding. And is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to say for myself, I'm not interested in reprimanding. I, I just want to be ed educating yeah. mm -hmm. um, um, people who are leading trips to make sure that they bring s sufficient information to the school committee. I, 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 I'm not going to support this yet. I guess I would be leaning toward not supporting approving it. If, it, it, are they really going to be doing fundraising over the summer? like within the next month that's going to be mm -hmm. a significant thing or could we just have this come to us at our next meeting well, my experience with international travel is that the teachers like to recruit the students so that the students can find the summer jobs and save their money over the summer to help build toward the cost of the trip next april and so as much time as we can give the families to prepare for um, to save the money it, it would be great but I don't want you to approve something you're not comfortable with, not having the information. And if you want to wait until August, um, that seems reasonable they to me. If they get summer jobs, they should have already done that. They should. <laughs> right. All right. I, I but one of the things that the school committee has said in the past has been that when, when these trips come up, that we want to make sure that we give the kids, everybody, a chance to be able to, to make that money and to make those decisions and to make those plans. And I mean, it was a, it's been an economic thing. Um, so I just want to state that, that we're giving them the time. I mean, we were supposed to give them as much time as possible, and hopefully a summer, because it's a lot of money. They're, they're probably going to have to raise like $3,000. Well, we don't know. Well, it's going to be about that, because that's about what it is on the others. We don't know exactly. No, I understand that, and I'm not happy that it didn't so, say anything either. So it certainly would have been helpful if Mr. Lombardi was here this evening and could have spoken to it. He said he was coming. Maybe um, we can table it to later in the meeting in the event he shows up. So, I withdraw uh, my motion, and I'll ta move to table it for later, in case he shows up. Second. Okay, so this will come back to us later in the meeting, um, and we will we will wait to 
and see if Mr. Lombardi shows up and he can maybe clarify some of the questions that we have. Okay. Okay. So uh, we will move along at this point and we will look under the reports and recommendations. And the first item here is superintendent search update. And I'll turn that over to Ms. Pick. So um, I've got two, kind of two sets of information for you on the superintendent search committee. One is that um, um, the mayor is um, um, naming the, the school, uh, the screening committee. Um, those letters are going out and we will be able to announce that probably by, um, at some point tomorrow, at which point we will release the names and put them on our school website if we could. Um, so we're, we're, we're in place for that. Um, we've done, a, I met with the mayor, we went over all of the applicants. We had um, very interesting um, candidates to choose from and we did our best to choose a, um, a, a body that would be um, representative of a lot of different groups in terms of um, the Civil Rights Committee, the SPED PAC, um, parents and teachers and staff and um, Ed and I will both be serving on the committee. Um, we've named a committee of nine. Um, last time we had 11, this time we've done nine. Um, and actually when I spoke to Joe Wood about that today, he thought that that was great because scheduling with nine in the, in, uh, more than nine in the summertime was only two people more difficult. Um, and I so said we're, we're feeling pretty good about that. And then also he was able to share with me that up until I asked Joe kind of what kind of response he's getting at NESDEC for this search and he says so far, he has had um, 42 requests for applications. That does not mean 42 people have applied yet, um, but that he feels that, that we're getting a um, kind of a good cross section. He feels that now that we're on the other side of the July 4th holiday, he's really going to see the applications coming in that the people who are in administrative positions are now wrapping up their last year and are ready to focus on this. And so he's expecting that he will um, have more information for us by the time we meet next. Um, this, the screening committee will meet for the first time the week of July 23, and um, Joe is, is prepared to come in and do a training the way he did for us last time in how the, the search process will work. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Pick. Um, next is superintendent search committee uh, member announcement, which we are going to move over. And we will go on to the business manager's report. I'll be doing the business manager report tonight. And Mr. McLaughlin um, is not able to make it uh, due to an unexpected illness. And we wish him well and hope for a speedy return. Uh, this is a busy time in the business office as we are closing out FY13. And Friday is the deadline to do a lot of our financial balancing and work. Uh, hopefully you received the Munis report. Good to see you, Mr. Lombardi. We're coming right back to you in a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the good news to report on page three of Munis, you can see that as of July 10th, we had expended nearly all of our budget, 99.8% of our budget. That point two is extremely important to me, so we don't go over budget. Um, we do have 41,000 in the available budget. However, we are still paying um, so last invoices, so we will spend that down to zero as we go into FY14. And uh, I wanted to make sure I pointed that out to you. I'm working with the business office. We had a meeting this morning, and also Susan Wright has offered to help us to tie up any loose ends uh, by, by tomorrow for FY13's budget. I believe, uh, oh, I also want to let you know that we have contacted Durham Transportation so that um, we do have uh, in line and on track our high school busing. So the busing will be the same uh, starting in September as it was this year. And we confirmed that this morning. Um, we are changing our emergency notification system. It used to be Blackboard Connect and now we're using school messenger notification services and that uh, took place starting July 1st, and we got uh, a much better price on that from last year's uh, software. So that was good work on the part of Angelo Rhoda and uh, Mark McLaughlin and making sure that we got the best product for the best price there. 
And as you know, uh, from the FY14 budget process, we've now allocated, thanks to your vote uh, last week, the $985,000 from the override. Um, we've notified those people uh, whose jobs were affected by that um, in person, by phone, and also with a letter to confirm that. So FY14 budget is moving forward. Any questions or comments on the budget? Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, we'll now move on to the personnel report, also being presented this evening by our superintendent. So the personnel report, uh, as you know, you were here for the retirements, and those people are all official on this month's personnel report. We've also done a number of new hires. Only um, one shows up here from June at the, at the point that this report was uh, generated. We have hired about 18 uh, new people since then. Uh, so your next personnel report will will show that obviously not new people or new positions, but people replacing the outgoing people who, who retired. Any questions on the personnel report? Okay, thank you. Um, next order of business is a vote on the interim superintendent appointment and contract. We um, had 16 people interested or contacted superintendent's office. Um, from that 16, we chose three people to call in for interviews this past Monday. And from those three, uh, we identified uh, Regina Hurley Nash as the candidate moving forward that uh, I'm bringing you to, bringing to you this evening. Um, to serve as the interim superintendent while we search for a full-time superintendent. And so I have the contract with us this, uh, with me this evening. I also have a copy of her resume if anyone would like to take a look at it. And I will go through um, some of the items here. Um, she uh, will be coming to us on July 23rd. Um, and she will work with uh, Brian for a few days before his departure to make a easy transition into her new permanent role as interim superintendent. I have the um, specifics and I know that uh, Superintendent Salzer worked on putting this together and if he'd like to say a few words about it. Um, I, I would have you do that unless you want me to read through it. Sure. Just no. I don't think okay. we should read through the contract. It certainly becomes public record, so you, the public would have access to it if they would like. I think what's important to note is that I feel that we have a very good quality interim superintendent, very experienced, who's excited about being here. And she's excited to take the position. Uh, she knows that it could be as short as six weeks or as long as six months, and even. Let's hope not, but up to a full year, and she is prepared to stick with us for as long as it takes for you to find the new permanent superintendent. Move to accept and approve her, her appointment. Second. All right, there's been a motion made and seconded to uh, accept. <coughs> for the discussion. Approve. I like approve the contract. Accept it, and approve the contract. There's been a motion made and seconded to accept and approve the contract. <laughs> we haven't accepted, but we approve. To approve the contract. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. I will send this around for your signing. Find your name and sign above, please. And the superintendent report. Oh, I'm sorry, before we get to the superintendent report, let's go back to the agenda item that was tabled, uh, the field trip request, and Mr. Lombardi is now here to speak more to it. Uh, Mr. Lombardi, thank you for coming. There were a few questions that arose. I explained to the committee that uh, you like to get this approved as early as possible so that you can recruit the students and the students have time to get summer jobs, save money, and be ready to, to pay the fees. 
The question that came up is, in the past, I, as I explained, this is your third time doing a trip with this company, Education First, and in the past you've had a nice attachment of itinerary. They look at, he's all prepared. Will you please hand those out, and I believe you'll answer all of our questions. I thought I was on at 6, 740. So We're shockingly ahead of schedule, Brian. <laughs> There was, amazingly, there was no public comment tonight. <laughs> That's a city council. That's how we got here so fast. Thank you. Did you run over there? No. <laughs> Biked over here. <laughs> um, so this explains the breakdown of the trip. Um, this year we're, gonna, we're looking to do a seven-day trip. Um, same organization um, that we've used that I've used the last two years. Um, two years ago, we went to um, Italy. Last year, we went to France and Spain. Same organization. They're fantastic in regards to what they offer for the price, um, the safety and security. Um, I mean, this found completely reasonable how they offer the trip and travel. Families, the students all love it. So we're sticking with the same organization. This year, instead of doing a 10 day trip, we're choosing to do a seven day. Um, which would limit the amount of time um, out of school, as well as giving students some time on the, on the tail end when we come back to have a day or two before going back to school if they're jet lagged. So our proposed trip would leave on Thursday after school before April vacation, and it's a seven days, and we'd be coming back the following Thursday. We'd be going to, we fl typically fly into Milan, it's a couple of days in Venice, Florence, um, and then Rome and really seeing about 3,500 3, years of history within seven, seven days. <laughs> That's in a nutshell. I can answer any questions you want. This is all the information we were looking for. Thank you oh. very much for being prepared to hand oh. it out to us. The cost is in there. It's 28 um, it's Back in the page, it's about $2,800. Um, it's on the <coughs> third, third to last page. And a price for that, just to, just to let just remind you, it, that's a um, round trip airfare, um, all accommodations, hotel, um, lunch, not lunch, um, breakfast and dinner. And basically, you get off the trip, and there's a person waiting for you that says Northampton. And from that point on, you are just with, with them, and they're whisking you around. They've made all the arrangements. So when you go to um, Rome, for example, and we do the Colosseum and the Roman ruins in the Vatican, they are bringing you around. They've arranged all the tour guides, all the access fees. Um, the cost that students have to incur beyond that $2,800, we pay for tips um, of the tour guides. But we raise that money prior to that. Um, I like to set it up so that when we get over overseas, the students aren't worrying about anything except for their own spending money. I take care of all the tips through fundraising. I have them already itemized out for the tour guides and the bus driver. Um, so when they get there, all they're worried about is their own spun spending money for lunch um, and um, souvenirs. Yes? Uh, it, it, what are we doing on the tour? And it says day five in Florence. It's a full day to explore on your own. I, I assume they're not really... They do not turn us loose. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I definitely sell the trip, and, and, and parents and students like the, the, a sense of the free time. And how the free time, I guess I'll use downtown Northampton. Suppose you start off at, um, at um, Academy of Music, and you walk to Academy of Music down to the bridge, and then back up, and you're, you're doing that walk, you're pointing out the sights. When you get back to the Academy of Music, you go, like, all right, guys, we have an hour and a half of free time. Now remember, we were just on this road, you walk down there, you're going to pass, you know, the Coliseum's right there. You can't miss it. And you're going to go around here. Remember that gelato place right over there? <laughs> you have an hour and a half to explore, and we meet, and we meet there. Um, so that's typically how the free time is. Um, the last time when we had that, tr um, that said full day to explore Florence, we actually went to a little village outside of Florence and took a cable car up to an, um, an old village. Um, everything's old over there. <laughs> so it's, so it's it, the group is together. Oh, absolutely. It's, when it says exploring your own, we're not just like turning them loose in the countryside. No, 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 no. And when they do get free time, again, it's, it's in small increments, you know, an hour, maybe two hours. We set ground rules that you know, students must be in groups of at least three. Um, and, and really, in my experience, what happens we, we tend to kind of navigate and be with each other. You know, the group really becomes um, cohesive. Um, you know, you really find students that want to break away. 
you know, I think there's some comfort in the numbers and sharing the experience of, of everything. One of my experience, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say one of my experiences, I have done a few trips, I have used EF educational tours in the past as well in my traveling. And a lot of times when you have an opportunity um, to visit an area and you, you're going through the tour and you might see a souvenir shop or someone selling something on the street, it, it's not the most appropriate time during the tour to stop and kind of barter or haggle or stop in for that gelato, but you make a mental note as a student of those things that you would go back and do when you have that little amount of time. And I think most likely, that's what I'm hearing from Mr. Lombardi, that during those free time times, they might take advantage to go back and get that item that they saw while walking through on a tour or get that little piece Absolutely. of food that they like to try. Yeah, I mean, as they tell the students and the families, this is, if you wanna relax, stay home, go to the beach, this is not a relaxing <laughs> trip. I mean, you, you are spending decent money and we're gonna make sure it's chock full of everything Italian in this trip to experience and, and take home. And as you're moving along, you're right, the tour guide is, keeping us, you know, uh, moving, and they don't like the, um, you know, they want, they have, they have a time fashion, they gotta keep us on. So when we have that free time, it's snacks, it's um, souvenir shopping, you're absolutely right. Uh, can I ask how many students this is open to? Um, we, well, first Italian trip, we went for 11, and that was because um, it, was already, it had already been initiated by someone, it was a very small group, um, primarily of a Latin class. Last year when we did the trip to France and Spain, we brought 23. Um, and I'm open to that, to that number as well. And this, this past of 23, what was really nice about it was a combination of all classes were represented, freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors, and it was really a nice miss, mix. And it was really nice seeing um, the grade barriers break down. Then all of a sudden, you, I mean, you just really had just kids being kids, hanging out and talking. And when we had you know, a, um, rooming arrangements or groups going off or sitting down to eat, just beginning to see that intermingling between you know, freshmen and seniors. And it was really a nice part of the, tri nice part of the trip as well. And so I don't really have, I haven't capped it. You know, it, really you know, it really goes by the chaperones. You want to have a one to six ratio. You want to keep that number. Um, that was my other the, question. Are the chaperones teachers or parents? Um, Teachers, I, you know, it's, it's um, one's a secretary, Cindy Murphy, and one's a teacher, Allison Keith. Um, I think it's you know when I was doing my interview for the principal, um, one of the parents asked me, you know, my child is in elementary school, and in many years, what are some things I have to look forward to? And one of the things I, I mean, I'd like to establish a culture at the high school where you can come to school and know there's going to be opportunities for travel, and if we do it right, that allows more people to have access where they have time to plan plan ahead as Brian has said I try to do this early so it gives people as much time as possible you know to save and plan um, and I also think it's a great thing for teachers to, to, to get involved in that you know it's work don't get me wrong you don't come back you come back tired but it really is a nice thing ex having that experience with the students um, like the last trip we were um, on an overnight train from um, Paris to Barcelona and I, you know, I had a, I had a share of a bunk, like a really small James Bond bunk in a movie with three other stu students. And we stay up to two in the morning talking. And I think it was just a really nice experience. And I want teachers to have those experiences with students. I think it goes a long way for everybody. Mr. Ball. Okay. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I just wanted to um, say thank you very much for putting together such a, a nice, informative um, package. And I also wanted to say that um, the paying for your tour and the paying in full or using the monthly payment plan, I, don't, I haven't seen that in the past. And I'm not sure if it's, it's standard, but I really, I, I think that that's great that you have it like that and that it just seems really, really helpful and conducive to getting kids to go and to making them feel like part of it. So with that said, I'd like to make a motion again to, um, to approve this. So a motion's been made to uh, second. approve. There's been a motion made and seconded. No further discussion? Sorry. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Lombardi. Okay, now back to the superintendent well, report. Superintendent report. I wanted to begin by sharing a, a letter with you. I'll paraphrase it. It's a letter from uh, Trina Rauscher, co-chairman of Hampshire County Relay for Life Survivor Ceremony. And she sent a letter to me uh, 
saying that she had asked some Northampton High School National Honor Society students if they would help with the Relay for Life, and over 20 students came to volunteer at the community event. And she writes to say, I cannot tell you how many people approached me talking about these great kids and asking me, where are they from? She said, I was gushing with pride for all of these kids. They were energetic, hardworking, and walked into this, into this event with respect and empathy for people with a diagnosis of cancer. And she offers three cheers for our kids and the hardworking staff who've created the atmosphere where kids want to be a part of giving back to their community outside of school. I thank her for that letter and thank our students and teachers for the work that they did. Not to make that possible. And last, I just want to give you some updates on a few things. Uh, first, the Director of Academic Effectiveness, the 0.5 position. I'm still working on finding the right candidate for that job, and I'm hoping to have that in place uh, before I leave in the next two weeks. I'm trying to find some creative ways to make that happen. It's difficult to have somebody, a high quality, talented individual who wants to work a 50% job. Uh, so we're trying to find a way that we can, we can make that work and I'll give you more information uh, as we get closer to coming up with a solid idea. Right now we have some creative ideas how to do it, but um, I'll bring that forward to you when the time comes. I want you to know that I'm generating a transition plan for the next superintendent and for the interim superintendent. I'm going to uh, spend a few days with the interim superintendent uh, reviewing the contract negotiations that we've been working on, make sure that they understand the language changes that are being proposed so that when and if the contract is ratified and put into place in September, the superintendent understands the changes that um, she will need to be aware of. I'll review the district improvement plan uh, that you have all voted into effect, uh, and that's a two-year plan. To, uh, our team had put that together uh, collaboratively so that the team will be doing the work and moving forward on that and I want the superintendent to be um, move, be able to move along with the team to put those goals in place uh, starting in August and September. Um, I'm going to go over with her the budget for FY14 including the override allocations. We're going to outline the day for convocation and the opening days of school. Um, though she's a very experienced superintendent, we are our own individual uniqueness here in Northampton and I want to make sure that uh, she's aware of how we roll things out at the end of August and beginning of September. Uh, it's very important for our school district that we have our district determined measures in place by September 15th and the district determined measures of student success, student learning called DDMs are connected to our the educator evaluation system and I, Brian were you at that workshop today? Yes, uh, Leslie Wilson and Brian Labardi went to that workshop this morning. Uh, they, w they have been leading that team that's implemented the new educator evaluation system for the past two years. And so they continue to take the lead and will work with the team and with the new superintendent on how to develop those district determined measures and have those in place in September. And finally, the uh, ALT team has decided that they would like to have a three-day retreat in August and they've scheduled it for August 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And I will help the superintendent prepare for that retreat as well. And finally, this is my last school committee meeting with you as your superintendent. I really want to say thank you uh, to all of you. Thanks for the opportunity that I've had to learn and to grow and to serve as your superintendent. It has been a wonderful experience for me to work with such a successful system and such a wonderful community that I've really felt a part of for the past two years. And uh, it's really been great. So thank you very much. Okay, um, we're up to new business. No new business. We do have um, future business and meeting dates here. We have the school committee meeting August 8, 2013, and we just heard about the um, alt retreat coming up at the end of the month in August that we'll get more information on. Uh, but before we adjourn, if I might just um, entertain you for a moment or two, um, we did just hear from Superintendent Salzer and his, his words and brief reflection on his time with us. And um, I too would just simply like to say that is, it is with mixed emotions that I publicly say my farewell to you uh, this evening. 
and um, as this is our last full board meeting that we should share together. At least I hope. I hope we don't have any <laughs> special meetings between now and your departure. Um, although Brian has only been with us for two years, he's moved this district forward in many significant ways. Whether it was with new educational initiatives or of hiring many new administrators, Brian has done, in, in my opinion, an admirable job. Uh, we undoubtedly are in a different place today than we were a few years ago. And for that, I say thank you. Thank you. I say mixed emotions because although saddened with your departure, I cannot also uh, help but feel happy that you're pursuing what many of us in the educational field often dream of, an opportunity to be an educator in an international setting. And for that reason, I again would like to wish you best of luck. Superintendent Salzer is leaving this school district on sound footing. Uh, we have detailed and measurable school improvement plans as well as a district improvement plan that will move us forward as we search for his replacement. It would have been tempting to someone to simply let the loose ends go untied before leaving, but our superintendent um, is not just someone. He is exactly what I was hoping to have found in a superintendent two years ago. He's an educator who is 100% dedicated to his job from the very first day to his very last. The North Panton Public Schools loss will certainly be JFK School Berlin's gain. It has been a pleasure to have worked side by side with you these last few months as Vice Chair for the North Hampton School Committee. So again, I say thank you and good luck. Galuk Danuk. <laughs> Did I get it right? Don Donka. Donka. Donka Galuk. Yes. That's good, luck. good luck and thank you, yes. right? And thank you, Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and I guess what I would also um, like to do, since we're running a bit ahead of schedule, if there's any member of the school committee who would like to take a moment to offer some thoughts or to share a few kind words to our superintendent. Absolutely. I'm still in a little bit of, little bit, little bit of denial here. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with you since before you came here, since I was the one negotiating with you, and from the get-go, I knew that we were going to be a great match. Um, you came here absolutely eager and passionate and ready to go, um, and you have been so dedicated and energized about your work, and you have pulled together this district in so many different ways. Um, <coughs> I am, as uh, was talked about earlier, especially grateful to the work that you've done with the negotiating committee. Um, I think that you've helped set a whole new pattern for how we do negotiations, and the bigger part of that is I think that we have changed, that you've helped change the culture in our relationships with our, our administrators and staff, and I really appreciate that. You have um, taken the work of, um, of the mandates that have come to us from the state um, just absolutely to heart and brought them to fruition in terms of the way we now do evaluations and um, site visits and um, the collaborative nature that you've developed it with the alt and um, we're just you, you've 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 um, set a stage for somebody new to come in um, that's a much easier stage than the, than it we had two years ago and uh, I, I again really just appreciate about that and I have loved working with you. Um, when I served, as I served as your vice chair for your first year and a half, um, I really appreciated the times that we talked and I appreciated your openness and willingness to hear everything that we all had to say and how um, collaborative and um, um, flexible you were in your thinking and creative. And I think that, um, you know, people always talk about, you know, you have to think out of the box, you have to be creative without really um, knowing how to do that. And I, I think you do. And I wish you all the very, very best as you move across the seas. And I hope that is all that you wish it to be. Thank you very much. I'd also like to wish you the best as you move on and 
you will be very missed. I admire you very much, and I enjoyed working with you on the principal search, and I enjoyed very much watching how you analyzed and how you took in information and how throughout the whole process you made everybody feel important and that you're very, very fair. And I want to also thank you very much for the integrity that you've given us. And I know that's who you are as a person and it shows, but that you've given 100% of yourself all the way to the end. And it kind of feels surreal like you're not leaving because there's no trails yet. I mean, you're still right there, 100%, still giving. And I just want to say thank you very much for everything that you've done for the school district and for really listening to the different schools, such as the elementary schools, and, and, and really understanding them as different entities and seeing their needs and, and addressing it as such. And I just think that you've done a really wonderful job, and you'll be greatly missed, and thank you. Ms. <coughs> Winnick? This is going to sound crazy. <laughs> but you know me. <laughs> After two years, you know me. So I, I have two things that I want to say to you. The first is that I really appreciate how, how unflappable you seem. Even in the face of a, a semi-crisis, you seem very calm, very reassuring, very comforting. And it helps everybody else to sort of step up and do the right thing and be, be who we, they're expected to be. If you were running around like a chicken with your head cut off, it wouldn't work. So thank you very much for bringing that sense of, of control and calm to the district and helping us find ourselves and trust ourselves and be what we need to be. And the second thing I would say is that never before have we had anyone who said, and on a personal note, and I can't tell you how much I've missed the last three weeks or so that there was no superintendent's blog that had on a personal note. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm having withdrawal from that. So, but I think it gave all of us a chance to feel like we kind of knew you better than we maybe really do, but it makes it feel so much easier <coughs> to work with you and to, so thank you for doing that. And I hope that you continue having that kind of an easy, open relationship in your next position because it really does help people to feel closer to you and the closer they feel to you the more they want to do what you're asking of them. So I think you've, you've found the ways to help people live up to the expectations that, that you have for them. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Meyer. So I, I've enjoyed working with you, Brian. Um, you have done an excellent job in your time with the district. Um, if there's one experience that I will remember, it's an email that you sent around about learning walkthroughs. And what I thought was interesting is that you had done a lot of those and trained a lot of people to do those in your time in the district. But the article that you were bringing to the attention of the administrative leadership team and the school committee was an article, a research article, that had found that maybe learning walkthroughs were not as effective in improving educational outcomes, but that professional learning communities might actually be more efficacious. And I think that that attitude of constant self-evaluation and critiquing practice is something that is what you want from an administrator, is that whatever initiatives you launch, that you make sure they're moving the district in the right direction. And so I think that that's why you've done good work while you're here, and I thank you for that. Shelfo. That's uh, so why I had my thanks to you as well. It was very helpful for someone who was a new school committee member to come into your office. And as Lisa said, the, the calming presence was, was a good confidence boost to me. So I wish you well. And thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm just kidding. No, exactly. All right. No, I was hoping to say something. Um, so one thing that that struck me over the last number of years is I've I've been able to talk and serve on different task force talking about what we need to do in education. And uh, a theme that comes up a lot is that schools need almost two different kinds of leaders: a business leader, someone who understands the operations and how to run things, and an educational leader, someone who can inspire and motivate teachers and, and bring a high level of expectation for all students and, and just, you know, two, basically two jobs. And that's what we need. And, and we found that with you, both of those um, 
in you, that you, you have this really strong sense of how a system works and how to pull everything together, uh, but you're also an inspirational educational leader. And the, the whole feeling of the district changed when you came in, and that was a, it was a tall order, and you pulled that off, and uh, I have great respect for you um, in this field to, to be able to do that and, and to be um, such a strong leader and uh, a mentor for a lot of people. So I think uh, your, your career is going to do very well. And, uh, so just thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you all for everything you said. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, it's very kind of you. And it's, it's, as I said, it's been a pleasure. I feel like I know you as a committee, and I know you as individuals, and I've really enjoyed each and every one of you. Thank you. With that, I'll move to adjourn. I'll second okay. that. Mo motion to adjourn. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you.